So this is a tornado emergency. This is a very serious situation. Uh, but again, uh, that is uh, uh, something that, that you pray that you never, ever, ever see. Uh, th this thing looks like it might be over one half mile wide, uh, maybe up to three quarters of a mile wide. This will be a day that will go down in state history. And all you can do is pray for those people. I cannot wake up from. It's uh, control chaos back here, basically. It was awful. It was the most scared I've ever been in my life. About the time I got through the bathroom door, well, the back of the house was coming off. And it was a wild ride after that. Hearing people yelling for help and not being able to do anything because you're the person that needs help, too. We felt the uh, felt the pressurization, heard the all the windows blow uh, implode. And then the next thing we knew, everything was flying around and falling in on us. Within a minute of us going in the door and getting in the room, it hit. I'm in my living room watching TV and I look out the window and hear crashing and I see the tornado over the corner of the building and, uh, and I knew it was coming right at me. So I took cover, did what I could and the Lord smiled on me. <laughs> A few moments ago, I had an opportunity in Air One to observe the damage from about 500 feet, and to say the least, it is massive. Uh, I would estimate on a three to four mile stretch of the city, at some parts more than a half mile wide, we have utter destruction. We have neighborhoods that have basically been removed from the map. We have businesses that will no longer be able to engage in commerce. And we've got thousands upon thousands of citizens who have lost uh, all of their possessions. We had to go to the VA and identify his body. They say he had broke his neck and flew him out the back window. They found him against a tree. I knew I had a lot of debris on top of me and I didn't know if I could, could get out, but I, I was sort of crumpled up almost in a in a squatting position and the first and I couldn't move my legs at first but that was just because of the debris and I
And all these emotions started to set in as, as the death toll kept going up and up. Every day that the death toll kept going up, I had a lot of emotions going through my mind, uh, all of them. Anger, I was angry at me. I was angry at God. I was angry at the system, because we failed the people of the state because the death toll was that high. I panicked a few times that day on the 27th, and even broke down a few times in the van. But then again, you'd hear a story about somebody that, that heard the warning and they did the right thing, and they thought, you know, you got 36 people here that would be dead if, if we didn't do the right thing. So th then you felt like, okay, you know, we, we did some good. It really hurts to think back and look at that and wonder what we could have done better. But with the limitations of our equipment, the limitations of radar as it is now, we can see tornadoes with radar, we see the thunderstorm that produces them, so we can't tell what's happening down in that lowest part of the atmosphere. Uh, it just makes you wonder, what can we do better? And there are going to be a lot of good things that come out of this, but there are going to be a lot of memories that haunt me for a long time.